Welcome back guys. This is Wolf Fire Studios and here with another devlog. Now let me just show you guys what all I've done. A very small update. I've updated my static meshes of these attachments. As you can see the reflecting lens is gone. So in the canted and the holographic as well because I'll be I'll be using a different method of using these 1x optics. Um, I'll be just using a widget and a reflective uh, sorry an emissive widget blueprint and because it's just a direct one times magnification so i don't need a render target or something but i'll be using a render target in this six time scopes and the acog one i'll be using a uh, scene capture component and everything so what i did for that let me just show you guys briefly i made this uh, blueprint for weapon attachments and then i made child blueprints as you can see acog canted holo leopold and red dot and a suppressor individually so i made these attachment child blueprints that i can use and then if you guys remember i had this weapon blueprint for my m4 so what i did i went to my m4 as you can see here the blueprint if you guys remember and i added these child blueprints they are not visible right now but if i make them visible as you can see holographic and if i make it invisible and use acog so what I did was I imported these child blueprints and I selected their respective class. Now they are a child of this class, right? I mean, they are directly attached to this mesh, attached to this static mesh. I'm sorry, the skeletal mesh. And what I can do here is use this function, update weapon optics. Let me just explain it to you guys how I'm using this function. I made this function update weapon optics in the weapon base blueprint because well weapon base is the parent blueprint and this m4 is the child blueprint so it will inherit this function so we are overriding this function and we are setting the various optics that we need on our static mesh that is we are just hiding the required meshes and making the uh, active mesh as visible for example if i use this holographic value i'll be setting the socket to view holographic I'll show you guys how I did that. Let me just quickly go to the skeleton. Yeah, here I made many, many sockets. Okay, like as you can see, optics. These sockets are the location for the location. If I want to attach them dynamically, you know, on these sockets and this view, these sockets are for getting the exact view value, like where I want the camera to be if I'm doing aim down sights. Okay, and I implemented an interface in my player blueprint i called it interface jack and there are just two functions here uh, very simple ones get desired optic and set desired optic here they are let me just show you guys the interface as you can see there are two functions get desired optic and set desired optic and what it is doing is it's just calling that function and then sending the variable here like it's an interface right it can be called as a message in any other blueprint so for example if i press one in the game I, I know it's a bit confusing but just stay with me i'm pressing one in the game so i'm setting this value of this enum variable i made this enum let me just show you enumeration it just has those text values okay so what i'm doing is i'm pressing one and i'm setting the enum as holographic i'm calling this function and whenever i'll call this function it will update the value of this variable weapon optic name and it will send the variable throughout wherever it is being called okay if i'm calling it here it will be updated everywhere else so because of that i'm using this value and sending it to my rifle as you can see set desired optic they both are interlinked so i'm sending the value here and what happens is whenever i'll press one this function is called and it will in turn activate this function here in the rifle blueprint and then it will obtain the value of that optic and we are running a switch and then we are checking okay which optic we are on holographic red dot etc and then we are hiding that hiding the not required meshes and making the required mesh as visible or the required child blueprint as visible also we are setting this uh, site uh, active socket as the required active socket and you might be asking where is this socket going so let me just show you guys the camera manager this is a camera manager class that you will have to implement in your player controller and i did so there's just very basic code we are casting to our character we are saving it and then we are 
setting two variables final camera rotation and final camera location and then sending it here so what it does is it will modify the camera's location and rotation on runtime since we are overriding this function and what are the values that we are setting it well we take arc player and we get its location of the camera and then we get our weapon and we get its mesh and then we get the socket active socket just like i showed you guys here the active socket variable we get this variable and then we feed it onto the get socket transform we get the location rotation and scale of that particular socket that we want to transfer our values onto and then we break it and then we get the forward vector of that socket and what actually it's it's a bit tricky math but let me just explain it to you guys briefly what we are doing is we are getting a vector in the direction of the socket okay from our camera towards the socket we are getting a vector in that direction we are normalizing it and also we are doing the dot product to check at is it zero or is it like is it one or minus one that is uh it's in the same line or in the opposite line like is it parallel or is it anti-parallel and then we are using that length and reducing it so that we have a neutralized value and then we are using that vector so that we can lerp between our camera location and the given socket location and we are using this ads alpha as the lerping alpha and where is this let me just show you guys this is the static ads code we'll just uh, press the right click button right mouse button sorry and then we'll enable ads and while doing ads it is just a timeline as you can see timeline goes from 0 to 0 0.3 value sorry in time and a value of 0 to 1 so basically we are doing an ads in a matter of 0 0.3 seconds and that float is the ads alpha as you can see this is the ads alpha we are setting it and in the camera manager we are using that ads alpha so that we can lerp between those values and this is the uh, lerping in the camera fov like the base is 90 you can reduce it to 80 what I'll be doing is this is the static code for all the 1x optics, but it works perfectly in aligning them. I'll just show you guys in a minute. But to do the same with high magnification optics, I'll be using, as I told you, scene capture component and a render target, and it will come in the later video. So I hope it's not as confusing as I've made it right now. It's just the same thing happening over and over again, hiding the not required weapon optics and vis making visible the required ones and setting the active socket. And there's another separate code for attaching the canted. Again, this was made in weapon base and I'm just overriding it and I'm attaching the canted site here. And there is the exact same one for uh, attaching the suppressor here suppressor in front of the weapon using the correct socket and yeah that's all that's all guys this is the code for just uh, implementing those optics like pressing one and then setting it and we are using our weapon primary weapon and then we are calling the update weapon optics this function update weapon optics so we are always calling this function and since it's a switch on enum so it will check and it will hide and make visible the respective meshes i hope it's clear it's the exact same code i can just press one for holographic two for red dot three for ACOG, four for leopold and five again for iron sites and six for candid side and seven for suppressor let me just show you guys how it is working so here we are as you can see and if i right click right now i can ads i don't have that circular iron sight part on my m4 because that's how i designed it but if i press one i can have holographic now holographic will have a different socket to view from as you can see and holographic looks fine if i press three holographic will be removed basically hidden and i guess red dot will spawn no sorry it's a yeah sorry number two is red dot so as you can see red dot is aligning perfectly if i press number three for acog and ACOG is aligning perfectly. Now, as you can see right now, it's black, but there will be a render target and a uh, SCC 2D screen capture component for magnifying the image in front of it. It is performance intensive, but that's what I can do right now. And if I press four, I can get Leopold 6x, six times scope. Yeah. And if I press five, I can go in iron sight again. And if I press six, I can get my canted sight, as you can see here. I know it's not turning right now. It should be rotating, but I'll do that in the next video. And if I can press seven, I can get the suppressor. I hope you guys can see it. Yeah, it's it's there. Okay.
so yeah that's that's all guys that's the small update i have been working on basically the articles and videos i was i was following they did not mention any such thing you know of attaching optics so it was my own you know theory of coming up with the interface function and updating the weapon on uh, updating the variable on runtime and then calling it everywhere else and that's all another small shortcoming guys i would like to show you guys very quickly um somehow something happened and the sprinting code is damaged like okay it is walking perfectly right it is crouching perfectly but if i jump it's fine but if i jump while sprinting it's pushing me backwards okay i mean if any one of you guys have an answer to this i'll be welcoming it like i'm really confused why it is happening like as you can see and i cannot even sprint properly as you can see the animation is hitching it's it's looping in a different way and it's pushing me onto the left side as you can see i'm just moving forward and then left forward and then left i don't know why it's happening and i narrowed it down to a problem with collision but i have no collision setup on this mesh so i don't know what's the actual problem here i'll try to fix it and if i cannot then i'll remake the project or maybe remake the collision files or something i mean i don't know it's it's a bit confusing it's really confusing anyways oh yeah broken shadows so yeah that's all that's it guys that's all for today um i know it's been a different one it's not as dense as usually the devlogs are but this movement problem has been making me go crazy i cannot just wrap my head around it so i'll have to find a way out and yeah that's all guys see you in the next one thanks cheers